Hi friends, Robert here for Diverse Opals. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, thank you to those of you who have been subscribing, uh, leaving comments and even likes. Today uh, we are looking at a piece of material from uh, Mintaby. And um, we've had this piece for a couple of years. We bought it from a miner with, along with a few other pieces. And it's been one of those projects that you buy because when you see it, you think I may not see it again, uh, so I should buy it and uh, um, keep it for later. Well, today is later and uh, we're going to do some work on this particular stone. Uh, I like this particular piece. I think it's a nice healthy piece. When you see nice clean breaks, like you see on here and on here, this is usually a good representative of a healthy stone. When you see lots of jaggedness on the surface of a stone, can mean that it's actually prone to fracturing and may have cracks in it. But uh, this, I'm very happy with the way it looks and um, I'm hoping it'll turn into a very nice piece, a final, uh, it'll turn into a cabochon. We are going to cut it into a cabochon today and uh, shortly we'll go to the grinder and we'll take off one side, then the other, and then we'll make a decision about which side will in fact be the top and which will be the bottom. There is a jelly bar running through or a potch bar running through the middle of this which may pose a problem or two uh, but uh, we won't know uh, more until we start grinding it and then we'll make those decisions. But first we will have a look at this on the scale to see how much it weighs and um, to see how much we lose overall at the end of that. Okay, we've got our scale, and we're going to see how much this weighs. Uh, looks like 34.8 carats. So we've got a, a starting point of 38.4 carats. We'll see, have a, we'll look at the end of this process and see how much material we've lost. So let's go to the grinder now. Before I start grinding, I uh, want to address something that came up in one of the comments um, uh, regarding... Uh, sanding um, and that is dry sanding um, um, you can get silicosis from dry sanding and that is very true um, but uh, I'd encourage you that if you are uh, you even using water uh, sawing grinding um, and uh, a soft diamond wheels um, I'd encourage you to wear a mask uh, I've been doing this for many many years and um, I have always wear a mask whether I be dry sanding, whether I be wet, a wet sanding, or whether I be sawing or grinding, I'm always using a mask. So I'd encourage you to do the same uh, because sil silicosis is a very serious threat and uh, don't become complacent about it. So, Well, we're, um, we're making progress here. Uh, we're taking some of the, the uh, dirt off the top. Uh, we're exposing some of the barb. Uh, we're starting to see some very nice green and red on this particular side. Um, I haven't decided which side will be the top yet, but it's showing a lot of promise. And uh, I'll just clean up a little bit more of this dirt here, and then we will do the flip side. We're, um, we're on the other side now, on the flip side, and we're making our way through the dirt. Uh, we're starting to see colour and pattern. Colour is very similar, but the pattern itself is quite a bit finer. Uh, and that may change, but you can see here that the pattern is a lot broader. Uh, this side here is a lot finer. So we'll keep going and grind some more and see what is underneath this dirt here. And we'll make a decision about which side of the stone will in fact be the top. We're uh, seeing a, a different type of colour coming through here now. Uh, it's the sort of colour that I like to see. Uh, you know, surrounding it, we've got sort of a dull look about it, but you can see this area here is starting to fire up and it's showing a brightness to it. Uh, and it extends out here. Um, I'm going to keep grinding a little bit more and see whether or not this is, if this can be found. Um,
I just I'm using the edge of the wheel just gently to take out some of the dirt. Uh, I, I don't want to lose a lot of weight and as I'm going to sculpt the surface and leave this in, um, there will be a bit of fluctuation in the surface. So uh, using the wheel flat is one way but I like to use the corner of the wheel at times to to get out dirt or just to create an, uh, an effect. So I consider now that I've done all the work that I want to do on the grinder and we will now go over to the sander and um, we will do the final sanding stage and the uh, polishing stage. I think I might be dopping this one. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult for me to hold. Just a reminder, it's important that um, when you're dopping that everything is warm, including your stone, because if your stone is cold, it's not going to adhere properly to the dop stick. So uh, it's important that your stone is in fact warm. So my stone's nice and warm now. I just want to freshen up my dop stick with a little bit more, a um, little bit more shellac, and uh, so it will hold well and then we will dop it up so it's a nice fresh coat on there of shellac we just warm everything up together and uh, just position it we like to make sure that when we are uh, placing the stone on the dop stick that it's in fact square on the dop stick um, i like the sander from the point of view that it just helps tidy up all the little problems that I've had with the grinder. Of course you can see you can see grooves here, you can see scratches here and I'm using a 240 grit uh, matador paper uh, which I uh, highly recommend getting a good grade of paper. Uh, the grade, the quality of paper is so very important so uh, I just encourage you to find a good quality um, it is actually on our list of descriptions below. If your sanding process has been done properly, uh, this should not take very long at all. So um, I've just made the buff as wet as possible. Uh, it doesn't mean soaking it in water, but it is wet. So we'll uh, get into this. What I like about leather, it produces a bit of a drag and helps to bring in that polish very quickly. And we can already see the uh, polish on the surface of this stone. I'm just going to use the edge of the polisher uh, to catch the, the little bit of a, a dip here in the side of the stone, making sure that your, your leather buff is in fact uh, nice and um, wet because and with polish because if it's not you will potentially uh, burn the stone. So there's our stone, and uh, it's looking very beautiful. Lots of broad flashes in it, lots of lots of colour. Okay, we're just. I'm just going to heat up the wax. I'm going to heat up the stone, and we're going to take this off. Um, and so we can turn it over. We want to do the flip side, or we want to do the back. Um, and so we like to keep the stone moving. Uh, we, if, the, if we don't keep the stone moving and heating up the stone evenly there's a chance that it can break um, so let's just keep it moving and check to see if there's any movement at all nope, not ready to go yet 
And the stone can get a bit warm. Here we go, it's coming off. And uh, we'll just turn it over. Um, the stone's very warm now. Um, as I said, I'll just freshen up the dop bit with some fresh shellac. Make sure it's melted. And we'll just apply it to the flip side. And uh, position it once again. making sure that it's it's ready to go. I like to try and get some of the shellac off because it clogs up my my sandpaper. Well, we're back from the workshop and um, uh, we've, I'm happy with the decision to make this side the front. Uh, although I was quite happy with the pattern that was appearing on the flip side, um, it wasn't uh, a wide enough area coverage of the surface. So I'm happy with the way this has turned out. And uh, we've got some lovely, some lovely flashes of orange and red and all colors in this stone. Uh, we've lost a bit of material. Um, it's now down to 14.65 carats, but um, that's the uh, that's what you have to contend with with uh, with opal having to deal with the goods and the bad. And um, overall, I'm happy with this result. It's taken a very nice polish, and um, yeah, this is this has been another. Another joyful experience of cutting and polishing Minterby Opal. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, leave a comment, uh, leave a like if you like so, and uh, um, we look forward to bringing you another um, informative video about Opal soon. I'm Robert for Diverse Opals. Thank you for watching.